For those of you who are taking the makeup course in Communicative Abilities in English 1, I'd like to give a, an overview of the instructions for the assignment for Module 2. I've listed the instructions here step by step, the order in which I think uh, I would try to complete the assignment. And I want to go over those with you here today, even though they are listed here in text form. I want to explain uh, each of these uh, for completing the assignment that will be due January 6th, 2023. All right, so the first thing I would do is to choose a topic from Unit 2 from the syllabus. It could be something related to environmental concerns, social issues, anything that you have uh, an interest in, you can choose a, a topic based on what's listed there in the syllabus. Try to consider a real-life situation where you might be asked to share your ideas or point of view. So this is going to be very important when it comes to presenting your final presentation, thinking of a situation where you might have to uh, present these ideas. Try to think of a purpose or a reason for having to give this presentation. Create a Word document in Teams. So if you go to Curso de Nivelación in Microsoft Teams, under Files, Week 2, you'll see a folder called Presentation Notes. This is the folder that I would use to create your own Word document, making sure that you rename the document using your complete name. In this Word document, create a list of 15 to 20 keywords related to your topic. This is a brainstorming activity. Try to think of it as a word association. There are no incorrect terms at this point. You're still brainstorming and thinking about any kind of word or phrase that relates to your chosen topic. I would list those 10 to 15 keywords in your Word document. Once you've completed the brainstorming activity, then Begin reading any text or watching videos from reliable sources or from reliable individuals that relate to your chosen topic. Now, these don't have to necessarily be primary research articles like what we generally stick to when we write an essay, but they should be from a reliable source. So I still would avoid any .com websites, but if you find educational websites or any websites from individuals that have that are accomplished in their chosen field that are experts that you would consider experts in the chosen field then this could be possible sources of information that you could draw on as you're becoming more familiar with your chosen topic try to avoid maybe youtubers or anybody online that would uh would not be considered necessarily a chosen topic in their field. The next point, as you gather information, begin drafting an outline. Now, the outline should include three levels of headings. And use Microsoft Word, the default font styles for creating your, uh, for your, for creating your outline. Let me give you an example here. If I open up a new document in Microsoft Word, So basically, I would use the, the outlying feature. So use the heading. So this, is, this would be a level one heading. This would be a level two heading. This would be a level three heading. In fact, you don't even need to indent as I've done here. In fact, you could, you could just delete that. Let me make sure that this third level, this would be a level three heading. So I want to double check. Okay, so this would be, these would be three different levels. All right, so try to have at least two key points for each of the levels, each of the three levels that you have. So again, as an example, let's say that this is a, these are two level ones. Let's say you want to divide up your talk into two key points. I would probably stick to two to four key points as a level one. Okay, these are going to be your main points that you want to talk about in your talk. In this example, I've chosen to limit the key points to two. Now, within these two key points, 
I can have a level two heading. And if you want, sometimes it helps. I like using the navigation pane because it, if you set up your headings as I've done here, then you can see these levels in the navigation pane. So this is level two, this is level three. So we need to have at least two level twos. So again, I'll, I'll choose a level two heading for, for this example. And, and then you'll have your level three. So again, the key point here, the, the idea is to make sure that you have at least two key points for each of the three level headings. So level one, probably two to three is going to be sufficient. Level two, probably two or three are, are going to be enough. In your level three, anywhere from two to three is probably enough to include in your 15-minute talk. All right, so this is how I would organize your outline, thinking in terms of levels, thinking in terms of your key points that fall within perhaps other key points. We want to extend each time you go from level one to level two to level from level two to level three, you're getting more specific. And that's the key idea here when drafting your outline is to extend your ideas to include details. And those details should fall within other general topics. Okay. And this is how we can uh, see those uh, we can see that hierarchy basically creating a, a Word document in this way. All right, so as you're creating your outline, and here it says read text and watch videos, okay, that, that's uh, relevant to your chosen topic. Now, as you're drafting your outline, make sure that you include citations anytime you have key words or phrases that come from an outside source. So you want to include in your outline both original thoughts, original ideas, and then you want to include uh, citations anytime that you include words or phrases that are coming from an outside source. My suggestion would be to create original ideas for your level one and level two headings. And then when you're talking about specific examples or facts or details or statistics, I would include those ideas as, or using citations, and include those as a level three heading. Okay, so again, level three headings, I would use those key points as facts, details, statistics, examples that are supported from someone else that comes from an outside source. Include a citation in your outline to distinguish between those ideas coming from an outside source. And then your level one, level two ideas, those words in your outline should be original ideas. So when, you, when you're reading, when you're reading or you're listening and watching a video, you're trying to find some examples, some information, you're looking for facts and statistics. So try to avoid uh, including information from an outside source that's too general. So it might help when you're drafting your outline from the beginning, start with the level one and level twos, perhaps. Okay, this is one way. You can do this from a bottom up or top down process. You can begin drafting your outline, thinking of a general idea first, and then maybe another specific idea that relates to that general idea but it's still your ideas. It's your ways of coming and putting together ideas in an organized way. And then find, try to find details, facts, statistics, examples that support those level two headings that you came up with, those ideas that are your own ideas. That's one approach. The other approach would be to just read and watch videos and get information, get details first. And then, based on those facts and statistics, those details, those examples that are coming from an outside source, build your outline and work to the general. 
Start to, from the specific with those examples coming from an outside source and then construct your outline with using uh, level two and level three headings that are more general in nature, but are your own ideas. You would basically be categorizing those those ideas that you got from, let's say, readings or videos or audio, maybe podcasts. Okay, so try to take one or two of those, either approach when drafting your outline, or maybe it's even a combination of both. But again, my suggestion would be to keep your original ideas as a level one or level two heading. And level three, I would reserve those as ideas coming from an outside source. Now, below the outline, I would add your references. I would include a references heading in your Word document in Teams. And below your references, include those according to APA. So even though this is not a writing assignment, I would try to, I would try to list those references according to APA. Whatever kind of source that you find, let's say you find a YouTube video and it's from a, an expert in the field, you want to include that in your outline. Simply go to Google, go to your browser and do a search and just type in whatever type of reference it is. Let's say YouTube video and then type APA 7th edition. Always type in APA 7th edition to distinguish or to so you avoid getting information that relates to the 6th edition. And in most cases, you'll be able to find examples. And what you're trying to find are examples both of citations, how to cite it, and, and then also the references, how to cite the reference. And a lot of times you'll get something like this where it'll show you the content, what to include in each reference, and then it should also give you an actual example. And when you're looking at the example, pay close attention to capitalization, which text is italicized, which is not. Pay close attention to punctuation marks and spacing. Okay, and basically just follow that example that you found online. And in most cases, you should be able to find accurate information if you limit your search or you limit the sites that you access to some of these top results that you find. Usually the top results here uh, in your search will give you reliable information when you're uh, trying to find examples. And if it's a book chapter, then you can do the same. Type in in your search, book chapter, APA 7th edition. An article, articles, APA 7th edition. Okay. So continuing on with our instructions. As, let's see, I think we've talked about this. The outline should consist yeah, make sure that the outline consists of only words or short phrases. The short phrases should include no more than three words. We are going to not create a sentence outline. This should not be a sentence outline, but it should be a an outline of individual words or phrases. And try to limit it to using just a few keywords for each of the three levels that you include in your outline. Okay, we have the, I mentioned the references below the outline. Once you have created your brainstorming list and outline practice, delivering your talk based on the outline, try to practice and come up with a good way of organizing those ideas in your outline. Now, the outline should give you an idea if you're, you're constructing your outline in a particular order, which is what I would do. When you're practicing, you might decide that either something doesn't fit or maybe you've timed yourself and you either need more information or maybe you have too much information. So it's, uh, it's very possible that as you are practicing uh, the delivery of your talk, you decide that your outline needs to, be, to change. You either need to add information or remove information or maybe you even need to reorder some, some aspect of your outline. So that practice is not only just to practice delivering or to practice speaking, but it's actually also to practice the information so that whatever you have included in your outline fits nicely into that 15-minute time frame. When you create your 15-minute video, 
of your presentation, consider the following. Try to begin with an introduction. Now, your introduction, I would try to introduce yourself, state the purpose of your talk, consider the target audience. To whom are you speaking? And that will probably also be included in your introduction. So again, this goes back to what I mentioned earlier. When you are thinking about your topic, think of a real-life situation where you would be asked to deliver this talk. And in your introduction, take that into consideration. Include a hook in your introduction. Maybe provide some background information and try to state some kind of thesis or key idea or point or point of view of your talk. This is all to be included in the introduction that should last no more than two minutes. Okay, so again, it's brief, but it's important. If you have a hook, you could include a famous quote. You could include a deep thinking or essential question. Um, It could be maybe even an important fact or statistic, something that maybe will surprise the audience to get their attention. This is a good way to include uh, or to begin your, your introduction, to begin your talk. After you have concluded your introduction, then we want to list out your key points. Now, these three key points, or these key points, I should say in general, should come from your outline, and it should include the key points that you've listed in your level one, level two, and level three headings. When you're delivering your talk, check your accuracy, your fluency, your pronunciation, your pauses, your intonation the volume of your voice, all of this is important. And as you practice, it's always good to try to record yourself, listen back and listen to yourself, checking for these things. This is something that you can do when you're practicing for your talk so that you can evaluate your your own performance in terms of these key aspects, accuracy, fluency, pronunciation, pauses, intonation, and volume. Try to include in your talk transitions. These transitions might include sentence connectors. Maybe there are introductory phrases like prepositional phrases or participial phrases. Maybe it's just beginning a, an idea with some kind of subordinating conjunction, come beginning with a subordinating clause. Um, but try to connect your ideas, maybe even pronouns. Uh, direct repetition also is, is a good way to Make sure that ideas are connecting to each other so that there is some kind of flow from one idea to the next. When you are ready to conclude your talk, right, your conclusion should last no more than one minute. I would restate your thesis statement or the key point of your talk and state any implications. What does this mean? What's the bigger picture? Think of those questions as to what you might include in your your conclusion, and then try to finish with some kind of closing statement. Now, your talk should be, even though I suggest that you practice the talk and you go over the talk, you want to avoid reading any text, any sentences, any complete sentences, unless, unless it's a hook at the beginning of your talk or maybe a closing statement at the beginning. If you're bringing in information or ideas or concepts from outside sources, then those should all be in your own words. And you do want to mention the person or organization. You want to, because this is not a written text, we need to know when you're delivering your talk, which ideas are your own and which ideas are coming from an outside source. So you can say something like, according to Ellis, or Ellis states this or stated that. Right, And you can include mentioning the source in the moment whenever you're delivering your talk, but it should all be in your own words. This is why I'm suggesting not to write out complete sentences in your outline, because I want you to use your outline as a guide in the moment when you're delivering your talk. When you are delivering your talk, I'll be listening to your presentation watching your presentation and looking at your outline to see how you are delivering your talk in terms of the outline that you that you developed. So you want to find or you want to follow the same order of ideas that you have in your outline as the as what you have in your in your talk. 
So for this particular assignment, I'm not asking for you to include a, a PowerPoint presentation. In fact, I only want to see uh, your face in the video. And basically, that's it. All right. So there should be no pre PowerPoint presentation, no other visual in your presentation, just listening to you, watching you give your talk. Try to maintain good eye contact with the camera since this will be a recorded uh, presentation. The eye, the eye contact with the audience will actually be your contact, uh, the eye contact that you maintain to the, the camera. All right, so again, I would practice so that you feel comfortable, maybe even practice recording yourself to see how you are maintaining eye contact with the camera. Sometimes it can be difficult if you're not used to giving long stretches of presentation or long stretches of uh, speech to uh, to someone uh, where you're asked to create a, a video where you have to look at the, the webcam. So practice until you feel comfortable delivering your ideas, but not reading long strings of text. And what I mean by long strings of text, basically avoid reading complete sentences. Again, the exception would be a hook at the beginning of your talk and a closing statement to conclude your talk. Once you've created your video presentation, include the link in Teams. You can post it in uh, Microsoft Teams. And I would also copy and paste the link into the Word document that you used to develop your brainstorming list and your outline, along with your references. All right, so basically these are the instructions for the assignment for Module 2. I would ask that you complete this assignment by January 6, 2023. If you do have any questions or you need further clarification, make sure you're reaching out to me in Microsoft Teams.